Welcome back to the Uncle Sharma channel. Here for a quick reaction to Inter's 2-2 draw uh, against Borussia Mönchengladbach or Mönchengladbach as Antonio Conte calls them at San Siro. Not the score, not the result that we needed. You know, Real Madrid dropping points against Shakhtar or Shakhtar, should I say, beating them 3-2 at home, um, which, you know, puts the group all over the place, discombobulates everything in the group. You know, Real Madrid were the big favourites to win. And now not so much and then we had the chance you know to go to go top of the group really and uh, put some pressure on Real Madrid we didn't take that chance into not quite at their best today but once again loads and loads of attempts on goal just not clinical enough Inter had 17 attempts on goal against the six Borussia Mönchengladbach had but the goals is what counts and Gladbach managed to get two out of the six attempts and Inter only got two out of their 17 attempts which says everything about the match once again Surprisingly though, there was a lot more balance in the team this time around, you know, the, especially the first half. We finally got to see that midfield of uh, Vidal, Barella and Eriksen in the attacking mid role. And lo and behold, when you have a proper attacking mid in the attacking mid role, you know, <laughs> Eriksen was, was quite good in the first half. Pretty much every single ball that he touched turned into something good, or something positive. He had four shots on goal, three of them on target, you know. Uh, much more improved the performance from Eriksen, although he did drop in the second half. He was almost uh, almost invisible towards the end of the second half and he was subbed off for Brozovic. But good signs from uh, Eriksen. Man of the match, I have to give it to Lukaku, obviously two goals. His hold-up play and link-up play wasn't as good as it's been recently, especially in the Milan derby. He was top class, but today a few bad touches, a few bad passes. His link-up with Sanchez wasn't that good. Sanchez was really... Off, off the pace today. I think he's still, you know, I don't know if it's the jet lag, the feeling from the, you know, international break and he, he was injured when he came back. So I'm not sure whether he had, you know, the match fitness in his legs. Lautaro was much improved, um, you know, created um, a lot more chaos as soon as he came on. Um, Darmian, I'm about to give a shout out to Matteo Darmian, Matthew Darmian, you know, lovely set of hair on him. This guy's glowed up since he's left Man United. I don't remember him being this handsome since uh, when he was at Man United. But uh, impressive debut from the first minute, you know, Hakimi getting COVID today, you know, so typical of inter season this year. We just can't get a lucky break, can we? And now Hakimi, who's been, you know, the light shining over the start of the season, out. So he'll be out for at least, you know, a week or two. We'll see. Hopefully he recovers soon, get well soon, uh, Ashraf. But Damian was actually very good out there. You know, he was even better than Perisic on the other side. You know, he got the assist for Lukaku's first goal. He almost could have had the debut goal when he almost headed in from the collar of cross. A great header. And he had a chance in the first half as well where he got onto a Perisic cross. So good stuff from uh, Damian. Solid defensively and, uh, you know, not too bad going forward. You know, he impressed me. Uh, did a bit better than I expected. But on that right-hand side, it was basically having two Danilo D'Ambrosios because Damian and D'Ambrosio are effectively almost the exact same player. Um, so it's quite funny that both of them were there on the right and they were swapping positions and you know sometimes D'Ambrosio would go up sometimes he would step back it was it was quite interesting good partnership between them you know they managed to contain Marcus Turam who was my main worry in this match on that left hand side he did you know get away a few times here and there and obviously he won the penalty Arturo Vidal you know he had a good match Arturo Vidal he had uh, he completed the most tackles he, he won the most tackles in this match but that one rash tackle that he has he has that in him uh, Vidal he does dive in a lot and this time yeah it was just mistimed and it was it was a penalty can't lie there and you know they converted and then they got the second goal again the balance that we had in the first half almost went again it's not it's not the, the players you know we have the midfield of Barella and Vidal who are you know the two workhorses behind Ericsson but it's the if the whole team is so high up and you know both Vidal and Barella went to press their midfielders and then on the counter-attack for that second goal, there was no one back. Uh, one ball in behind the defence. Um, you know, for some reason, Vidal was at left centre-back in that moment. But, you know, it, it, even if, if we still are seeing people saying, oh, if we had Godin, if we had Skrinia, if we had Bastoni, yes, they probably would have made, made more of a difference against Milan and other teams. But when you have a defence that's so high up, you can put anyone there. You can put Peak, Bonucci, Barzali, Chiellini there. You can put Beckenbauer, you can put Maldini, like covering such big spaces, such unbalanced um, pressing is, is very difficult for anyone. And that's what happens sometimes in this team. We still 
have these moments in the match where we just leave like acres and acres of space and it's very very confusing because this is not a very Conte like uh, you know Conte teams don't do this usually they're very organized they're defending first and I keep saying this metamorphosis of Conte into this Marcelo Bielsa type Zenik Zeman is, is just crazy it's so 2020 but overall once again the performance wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad at all Kolarov and D'Ambrosio were exposed a lot less as I said the balance was better but then it's just that in the little moments in the match we, 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 we press way too high or the pressing is a bit disorganised and they can come through so easily but overall I'm pretty happy with the performance we just need to be a bit more clinical we can't keep creating so many chances and not taking them we're going to get punished at some point in Champions League you can't, you can't, you can't do that Luckily, the next match is not, you know, the hardest match because the other team that we're playing next in the league is Genoa, who are very, very much COVID hit. They have had 12 or 13 players out with COVID, so they're even more hit than Inter with COVID. So they should be a little bit of an easier challenge, but this Inter team looks quite low on confidence, looks quite low in terms of, you know, being aggressive in front of goal. So it won't be easy. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of that match. Who was your man of the match? Mine was Romelu Lukaku. Uh, I was impressed with Eriksen. What did you guys make of Eriksen? Perisic, a little bit of improvement on left wing back. Good uh, showing from Darmian. Uh, Kolarov almost scoring at the end. You know, when, when he has the ball, that guy is good. You know, he just not, don't need to expose him when he's on the counter attack. But, you know, improved showing from Kolarov as well and Ambrosio. But yeah, those were my thoughts on this match. Disappointing draw, but we move, guys. We move on to the next one, and I'll see you for that next one against Genoa. Ciao.